Hey man, you can know you watch. Alright viewers and subscribers, my name is Dan Sal Skiller. I am here again, big up and respect to each and everyone. Now, this video that I'm doing is in the respect of a Black History Month and also to let you know about a African-American female who goes by the name of Sarah Rector. Sarah Rector is known as a African-American female who became a millionaire before she was 18 years old. Before I tell you some of the things that I found out after I did some research about Sarah Rector, I'm going to encourage you, my viewers and subscribers, to click the subscribe button and also click the notification bell if you want to be notified whenever I post a video. All right? Now, viewers and subscribers, Sarah was born on the 3rd of March, 1902 in Indian Territory, that's in Oklahoma, United States of America. She died on July 22nd, 1967 at the age of 65 in Kansas City, that's in Missouri, United States of America. See me? Sarah was born in 1902 near the all-black town of Toth, located in the eastern portion of Oklahoma in what was then known as Indian Territory. See? She had five siblings. Her parents, Rose McQueen, who is her mother, and her father, who was known as Joseph Rector. Both her mother and her father were married to each other. All right? Just to make that clear. We're African descendants of uh, the Muscogee Greek nation, Greek Indians, before the Civil War and which became part of the Muscogee Greek nation after the Treaty of 1866. As such, they and their descendants were listed as freed men. Because of this, they were entitled to land allotments under the Treaty of 1866 made by the United States with the five civilized tribes. Nearly 600 black children or Muscogee freed men minors, as they were called, were granted land allotments. Sarah Rector was allotted 159.14 acres of land. This was a mandatory step in the process of uh, integration of the Indian Territory with Oklahoma Territory to form what is now known as the state of Oklahoma. See? Now Sarah Rector and her family lived 60 miles away from the land that was allotted to her. And um, the land that uh, was allotted to Sarah, or you could say the land that Sarah got, that land was considered inferior, infertile soil, not suitable for farming, with better pieces of land or lands being reserved for white settlers and members of the tribe. Sarah's family lived a simple life. However, Sarah's parcel of land was somewhat of a burden on her father because of the $30 annual property tax that was to be paid for the parcel of land that was allotted to Sarah. So Sarah's father petitioned the Muscogee court to sell the land. But however, his petition was denied because of certain restrictions placed on the land. So he was required to continue paying the taxes. In February 1911, Sarah's father leased Sarah's parcel of land to the Standard Oil Company. In 1913, the independent oil driller B.B. Jones drilled a well on the property which produced a gush. That began to bring in 2,500 barrels of oil a day. Now, because of that, Rector began to receive a daily income of $300 from the strike. 
So the law at that time required that uh, full-blooded Indians, black adults and children who were citizens of the Indian territory and uh, have significant property and money that they should be assigned to well-respected white guardians. You see? So as soon as Recta began to receive this windfall or you could say started to receive numerous amount of money there was a pressure to change rector's guardianship from her parents to a local white resident named tj r j t porter now porter was known to sarah's family see it in october 1913 Rector received royalties of over eleven thousand dollars. Yes, me, or you could say, according to the information that I found, it is said that she received royalties of eleven thousand five hundred and sixty-seven dollars in nineteen thirteen. Yes, me. So as news spread around the world about Sarah Rector's wealth, she began to receive requests for loans money gifts and marriage proposals despite the fact that she was only 12 years old at the time in 1913 oklahoma legislator made an effort to have her declared white so that would allow rector to reap the benefits of her elevated social standing such as riding in first class car on the trains and more importantly as a white woman white men could legally propose to her marry her and seize control of rector's land and finances is it in 1914 an african-american journal began to take uh, interest in sarah rector just as rumors began to fly that uh, she was a white immigrant who was being kept in poverty the newspaper published an article claiming that her estate was being mismanaged by her family and that uh, she was uneducated and had a poor quality of life there's more to that part of the story viewers and subscribers that's what i'm saying to you about you know i just want to get to some some part of it that i think is more important for you my viewers and subscribers to know you see me so rector was already a millionaire by the time she had turned 18. she owned stocks bonds boarding houses businesses and a 2000 acre piece of prime river bottom land right Sarah was also enrolled in a children's school that is a boarding school in Alabama and uh, sometime after that it is said that uh, she and her entire family moved from where they were living at that time and uh, went to Kansas City that is uh, Missouri in United States of America right it is said that Sarah purchased a house on 12th Street that is within Kansas City, Missouri. And it is said that uh, the house is still there. And the house is being called Rector House. It is said that the house had been purchased by a local nonprofit with the intention of restoration and historical and cultural preservation. See it? Soon after Rector moved to Kansas City, she married a local man known as Kenneth Campbell. The wedding was a private affair with only her mother and the bridegroom's paternal grandmother present. You see me? The couple had three sons before divorcing in 1930. So, Recta lived a comfortable life, you know? She enjoyed her wealth. She had a taste for fine clothing and cars. She had lavished parties and entertained the celebrities you see it rector died on july 22nd 1967 at the age of 65 her remains were buried in the city cemetery 
of her hometown of Thought. Now, viewers and subscribers, you see, you see, after I did the research and I got somewhat of an understanding about uh, Sarah Rector's history, you see me? In my point of view, the parcel of land that Sarah Rector got was considered to be um, a parcel of land that uh, couldn't do no farming. You see me? So maybe in that time, persons look at that uh, part of land or that piece of land as uh, a land that is no good. See? So then gave it to Sarah Rector. You see me? But you see? You see how life go? That same piece of land that was considered to be a piece of land that was no good turns out to have a lot of value. Yeah, it turns out to have a lot of value. See? One of the things about uh, Sarah's life that I found upsetting is about the part where they said that uh, Sarah received marriage proposals. Although she was 12 years old at the time. You see me? Persons trying to take control of the little girl property and her finances. None of that not right. In no way, no farm. You see it? So that's one part I find somewhat upsetting. But anyways, now viewers and subscribers, I think it is good to know about history. All right. So you can let me know what you think about some of the things that I just told you about Sarah Rector. All right. All right. And um, here's where I'm going to leave it. So big up and respect to each and everyone. And until the next time, if you're new to my channel, don't be afraid to click the subscribe button. My name is Dancer Skiller. You know, big up on yourself. You see it? Hey, my you, you know where you watch? Dance, I'm a skiller! Yeah, man, i Hey, yo, skiller! You are watching Dance, I'm a skiller. Tint it.